Greetings fellow men, servus Männer, this is Red Pill Germany again and today I want to talk about the current state of the AFD, the right-winged opposition party in Germany. After their relative success in the last elections, they had their first federal uh, party convention last weekend and there they had to reorganize themselves and they had to elect lots of people into lots of functions and the media since then has actually claimed that the party further radicalized itself and drifted even further to the right and that there is a huge power struggle within the party. Now for my taste this is all a bit too sensationalistic and I cannot really see the drift to the right in all honesty, but I will tell you now what I think about all that. So first of all, most parties have more than one camp. Yeah? Two camps at least, many parties have even more wings and camps and subgroups than that. For example, in the AFD there were these economists who were opposed to the bailouts and the euro and uh, they are pretty centrist actually in their political views they just don't want uh, Germany to pay for all the debt of other European countries and they think that the euro is harming both Germany and the other states in different ways but it harms everyone. Now these people are not very nationalistic uh, most of them also uh, are German patriots but they're not really uh, hardcore nationalists. Then there are the freelancers and the entrepreneurs who want of course more economic freedom and better conditions for uh, people who are responsible for their own income, who are not uh, working in a big corporation or for the government. They are very close to the group I mentioned first and then of course there are very nationalistic people there also who don't really oppose um, welfare as long as it is for Germans as I understand it and who see that um, open borders and migration is a very big problem. Now the groups I mentioned first, um, these uh, freelancers, entrepreneurs and these economists, uh, they of course when they're in the AFD they also see open borders as an unfiltered migration as a big problem but it is more a question of where you put your focus on so they don't deny these problems they just think that the euro and the bailouts that this is maybe more important or it's more their expertise maybe they say Im immigration is the biggest problem at the moment but I'm more a finance guy so I want to talk more about this so but now the media tries to spin this as if the party is totally divided and there is open war within the party and nobody agrees on anything anymore. I don't think this is really true, at least I hope this is not true. Of course only the future will tell how these different groups will act together as one faction in the Bundestag and also as one party in the German Federation. Now to be fair, there is a lot of rivalry between those different camps and they all tried to get their candidates elected into a party function. And there was a moment, which I will come to now, uh, where it briefly looked like um, that there would be some kind of big clash between those factions. One of those factions is the wing, they're just calling themselves the wing, and that is the more nationalist right-winged part of the AFD and then there are these more economic minded classical conservatives. So the first chairman of the party uh, was again uh, Professor Dr. Jörg Meuthen, that was pretty clear. The question was only will he be the only uh, chairman or speaker as they're called in the AFD now uh, or will there be a second and a third and whatsoever. So when the second speaker would have to be elected there were two candidates. The first candidate was a retired colonel of the German army, Georg Pasterski, and he is more of the um, central wing of the AFD, or the not-so-nationalist wing. He is in the party for quite a while already, and he said that he joined the AFD because he has children, grandchildren now, and he wants to do anything he can to protect Germany and as a good patriot he wants to ensure that his uh, children and grandchildren will inherit a country that is worth to live in. So he's no doubt very patriotic, very right-winged, but he still seems too moderate for many people in the AFD. And another such candidate was Doris von Sein-Wittgenstein. 
So she is only in the party for a little more than one year. I think she joined in March of 2016 and she gave a speech after Herr Padzdersky, who gave a very professional political speech, I would say, very moderate. Her speech, however, was very much emotional and she identified herself as a proud gun owner and uh, she made a lot of appeals to emotion in her speech which took the other camp a little bit by surprise, I thought. One of the basic um, differences was when the AFD should actually consider um, entering a ruling coalition. Um, Georg Patsdersky said that now, of course, they are an opposition party, no doubt about that, but the goal would be that in four years um, that they could actually rule in an appropriate coalition where they could realize their goals. Now after these speeches people could ask questions, um, the other delegates could ask questions to the um, competitors here and I think he was asked how many points of the party program or which points of the party program he would sacrifice in order to enter a coalition as a um, smaller partner for example. And yeah that is a mean question you can say but it, I understand this question very well. It is a good question actually. And uh, he had to backpedal a bit and it made him look a little bit weak. Frau von Sein Wittgenstein however said that they will never enter a coalition as a smaller partner. They will only enter a coalition as the bigger partner. Now the thing is, we don't know when that will be, in 20 years, in 30 years? So you guys see already, uh, one of the biggest differences between these two basic camps in the AFD is when should they actually consider and under what conditions should they consider entering a coalition, a ruling coalition on the federal level. But Herr Patsdersky actually said this coalition building will actually first start in Eastern Germany on the state level where they are already on eye level, for example in Saxony and maybe in other states soon. So that was actually a very good point. He said we can change a lot already at the state level. We don't have to have a coalition at the federal level yet. So I thought that was a very good point and it's realistic of course. In some states of Eastern Germany they might really be on eye level soon or in Saxony I think they are al already so that's a very good point and the other camp however they don't want to think or discuss about that at all now they just want to do opposition work which is also important but in the end they want to change Germany and it almost seems like they don't think that uh, a parliamentary democracy is the way to do that even though we have many examples where this actually worked of course they will not be able to completely change Germany and <laughs> they will not be able to vote in new laws of physics, yeah? but do what's possible, yeah? do what can be changed. That I think is possible in the not so distant future. Another point where they differ is um, the degree to which the party should become more professional. That means that not everyone can just filibuster who doesn't have people who back him up anyway so that things can be decided in a more fast manner and they want to streamline the processes a bit uh, which I find is necessary because they grew uh, so fast in such a short amount of time they really have to become more professional now and I think they're on a good way to do that. So going back to the topic of the election of the second speaker, the mainstream media and the other established parties of course wanted to see that these different uh, wings and factions within the AFD would completely destroy each other on this convention and there would be a schism in the party. And for a moment it actually looked like that to be fair. In the first round uh, both got just a little bit under 50%. Of course there are people who vote no, neither of them or who don't want to cast their vote at all but it was something like 49 to 47 or something and then they actually had to consult the rules what that means do you need a simple majority or do you need over 50 percent and it turns out you need it over 50 percent so neither of the two uh, competitors could be declared second speaker yet. Now there was a short break and then a second voting and then it was the other way around. So now Georg Patsdersky got a little bit more votes but still not over 
50%. So then um, there was a larger break and they discussed behind um, the curtains, so to speak. And the outcome is that Dr. Alexander Gauland became the second speaker. Gauland is an old man and I think he is a brilliant politician. I like his style very much. He is the Nestor of the AFD and he is actually a figure, a person, a character who can unite both big wings in that party. He is someone that everyone trusts and I hope he can unite those two camps that they grow together and they start to trust each other during several years of parliamentary work for example so that despite their differences they can trust each other and grow together as one party that would be my hope for this turn of Alexander Gauland who didn't want this position but um, they asked him to step up and save the party so to speak because at this point the election was at a deadlock so overall I want to say that one saw already that this party has grown a lot. They became a lot more professional and more aware of their own power actually. They are on a very good way, very fast already. If you look back uh, to the beginning of the 1980s when the Green Party entered uh, the Bundestag, um, you saw these goblin-like creatures there knitting in Parliament, uh, looking like they just came in from some cave or from the forest. And they had not only two wings, they had crazy crazy groups some were just against nuclear power some were complete communists some wanted to save the forest and were afraid of acid rain and the ozone layer and some were women's rights activists some were gay activists some wanted to just legalize drugs and didn't care about anything else others were lobbying for practices that we now know from Hollywood actually they wanted to legalize all that, what people are actually exposed for in Hollywood right now. So if you know my channel, you know I have a little uh, fetish with the Green Party. I just hate them. <laughs> and this is why I always bring them up as a negative example wherever I can. So if you compare that and you just take a look at how the Green Party looked like in the beginning of the 80s, you see a huge difference already. So just as a side note before I end this talk, Something that uh, Frau Doris von Sein Wittgenstein, or however she calls herself now, um, what she said uh, really rubbed me the wrong way. And that is, she said, we don't want to be a part of Germany, you know. They don't accept us here, we're ostracized, we want to be our own group, we don't even want to be a part of Germany. And that, I think, is a very wrong way of thinking. So first of all, millions of voters voted for the AFD. In many districts, they got around 30, 40, 50 percent of the votes. They are part of Germany. And just because some media elites and some party cartels don't want to talk to them doesn't mean that they're not part of Germany. That is ridiculous. There is no one German society anyway. If you pick randomly two Germans, they can't agree on much. And more importantly, if you consider all German voters, there is no issue that everybody can agree on. Not a single one. So there are many, many subgroups within Germany, like in every Western society now. We're all atomized in some way. There is no big theme that unites us all other than maybe football, but not even that. So Crimea River, you're not accepted by the other parties. Boo-hoo. The Green Party was, was also not accepted by the other parties in 1980. But the number of votes that you already have, that means you are part of Germany. And if you want to change something about Germany and you consider yourselves to be real Germans and good German patriots, uh, what does such a statement uh, tell me now when you say you don't want to be part of Germany? Yeah, then go away. Yeah. Now I also want to add, and I want to say this very clearly, I can understand both sides here really well. One of the sides, of course, says time is running out, we need to get into government if we want to change anything, if we want to save our country. The other side maybe has seen lots of attempts and a lot of successful attempts also at watering down a decidedly right-wing program in a party. Maybe they're still traumatized from the CDU and how social democrat they became and how conservatives were really 
um, yeah, bullied out of the party. So they are afraid that the clear, true message is watered down and too many compromises are made. And then in the end, um, you just have the average mainstream established party program. And this is the difficult thing. Both sides are completely rational and I can understand both these concerns. But they have to find a way to actually keep their points, you know, keep their program alive, uh, their ideas alive, but to uh, put some of that into action, yeah, to realize some of these plans. And this is the basic conflict right now and I hope that these tidal forces of this conflict will not pull the entire party apart. And another side note <laughs> before I really end this talk, because it fits in nicely with my usual content, lately I make more political content because politically so much is in motion in Germany at the moment, but I just want to say, you know, there were other female AFD delegates that were interviewed by um, Phoenix, this um, state media outlet that was covering live, and um, these women said no, they didn't vote for her because they don't trust her yet, they don't even know who she is, she's just in the party for one year and now she wants to be second speaker, that's weird, but these women added, um, they are actually sad, you know, they wanted to vote for her because that would be another woman in a position of power in the AFD and that is always good. Yeah? And here you see this in-group preference again, you know, uh, you have very nationalist, very right-wing conservative women, but even they cannot really uh, shake this off. Maybe in left-wing parties they would have voted for her just because she's a woman in the AFD. Maybe that is the little difference on the conservative side. They said they would have liked to vote for her because she's a woman, but they didn't. Because the factual reasons, because she's honestly a crazy person who probably bought her uh, noble name. Uh, she's not a real uh, von Sein Wittgenstein. Uh, she is either adopted or she bought the title according to what I know or what, what I read, but um, that's neither here nor there. The fact is that she is a little bit of a crazy person if she actually thinks that the AFD should not be part of Germany. That is ridiculous. But the fact that one of these other uh, AFD delegates said she wanted to vote for her because she is another fellow woman. Yeah, that is maybe a little red pill for uh, some conservative or nationalist guys out there who think that nationalist women are somehow different. No, they're not different. They also show this irrational uh, gender bias, this in-group preference, so that they would always side with another woman, no matter what the arguments are, no matter what the facts are. Uh, they want to see another woman in a position of power. And then everything will automatically become good, right? All right, but now I really call it a day. I have to go to a party and I can just say that I will further keep an eye on the AFD and I want them to succeed in Germany. I want them to grow together as one strong party in Germany that could become the next Volkspartei. Uh, I think they have what it takes and maybe in 10 years it looks differently, but at the moment I'm convinced that the program of the AFD and what they advocate for is exactly what Germany needs at the moment and my personal opinion is that the sooner they can grow and they can actually enter a coalition first on the state level and then in four years or maybe in eight years even at the federal level the sooner the better Germany needs these ideas. Not this party, not some person, but these ideas. They need to be realized, put into action in Germany very fast. Alright, so enjoy the rest of your weekend and catch you guys again next time. Servus Kameraden!